All right, now that we're all based in Tramps Pill, uh, let's talk about uh, that video that I did and a lot of the coverage of Tramp Stamps over the past few days, kind of tearing the band apart a little bit and just talking about the general drama on the TikTok platform, accusing them of being uh, industry plants and so on and so forth. Uh, personally, if you guys watched my video, you know that um, I think the band has kind of presented themselves in a somewhat inauthentic way, and obviously they have some industry connections. I don't know if I would go as far as to say um, that... Uh, they're being puppet mastered behind the scenes by Dr. Luke or some major label or something like that. And, and the reason I say that is because um, from my position, from my vantage point, uh, I am exposed to and I'm privy to a lot of album rollouts and a lot of album rollouts from artists that are new and you guys haven't heard of yet and like are kind of fresh on the scene. And... Um, are kind of being a, a, you know, marketed professionally for the first time, and um, what Tramp Stamps to me, as far as the marketing behind what they were doing goes, seemed very um, amateur, and not the kind of thing that a major label would uh, be the architect of, because it just seemed like very bad and had great potential to blow up in their faces and seemed very obviously corny from the outset. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not outside of the realm of possibility that, you know, it would be a label behind them kind of trying to break this assembled industry plant band, uh, trying to appeal to, um, you know, gender, queer, TikTok kids that like pop punk. I, I guess it's maybe possible, but honestly, I, I think it's... a uh, probably something of their own making entirely, and it just turned out really bad. Now, uh, look, between my coverage and all the coverage uh, that has, you know, come up uh, in terms of uh, tramp stamps over the past few days, uh, there's been a lot of drama, there's been a lot of uh, anticipation as to how the trio would eventually respond, and uh, it seems like they finally did. You know, I, I saw a few people online kind of taking bets as to how exactly the response would go down, and Notes app was, was kind of uh, one of the options and uh, very surprised and uh, very uh, interesting to see that it turned up a, a Notes app. You know, could have been a video, could have been disappearing from the internet entirely, could have been some other option, but nope, uh, they went with sort of the Notes app apology. Now keep in mind, uh, in the midst of all of this drama, there's been some digging on some tweets. Apparently, people found some old tweets where I guess the lead singer was, uh, you know, mind you, when she was a teenager, had had used a, a racial slur in uh, some tweets. And uh, people sort of like have been calling them out on that as well. So, uh, you know, that's been a um, sort of an issue. Now, that is also discussed. <coughs> That is also discussed in this uh, Notes app read over here. Hey, thank you, Caspa, for the sub, as always. That has also been discussed in this Notes app read, and uh, we're going to go through it. It's it's pretty interesting that they went through uh, all of this uh, <laughs> effort here. You know, usually the Notes app apologies or, you know, addresses or maybe like one page, but we got a four-pager here, folks. We have a four-pager. We have a four-pager Notes app I'm not even going to call it an apology because in part some of it is an apology, but it's also just like very um, combative as well. So let's uh, let's dig in uh, to the Tramp Stamps response. All right, here we go. Kicking it off like total girl bosses. Hi, fuckers. Tramp Stamps here. You know, true to their brand. With the non-edgy attempt at being edgy. Uh, swear words right in your face. Hey, fuckers. Get ready, fuckers. Get ready to read some stuff from some girl bosses, fuckers. Uh, tramp stamps here. The misinformation and lies that feed this cancel culture are so fucking toxic. Now, it's... Man, you you know it's going to be some bullshit when it, it... Like, the first words that come out of the gate are cancel culture. You know it's going to be some bullshit. You know, it's it's not... The consequences of my actions. <laughs> it's cancel culture. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, cancel culture is certainly a thing. And sometimes it can go too far. And obviously, you know, when you talk about 
online internet mobs, uh, socially anyway, uh, playing judge, jury, and executioner, of, of course you're going to have uh, negative consequences. Of course there's going to be a downside to that. Uh, but not every time does someone call out you know, something bad or wrong or silly or ridiculous is it cancel culture. Um, but anyway... Uh, we are three women who have been writing and producing music for many years, busting our asses in the music business and building our personal careers. We all crossed paths and wrote together as a band uh, for the first time in February of 2020, and our unfiltered conversations led to the songs that you are so pressed about right now. As soon as we started sending these songs around, just about every A&R label was wanting to sign, uh, uh, sign with them, wanting, wanting us to sign with them, but we decided to do something different. We chose not to sign to a major label, going to... Slide this up a little bit. Whoop, 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 whoop. Here we go. We decided not to sign to a major label. I, I wonder what label was offering. I wonder what label was trying to land them. I wonder what label was trying to bring them in. That they were just like, no, you can't have us. We're tramp stamps. Gr hate buckers can't sign us. We chose not to sign with a major label so we could have full creative control. You know, have, having said that and read that and seen the way that things have played out for Tramp Stamps, I think maybe having another person there to, you know, kind of have an eye on it and be like, you know what, this is maybe not going to play out so well. Maybe this is not going to, you know, uh, be so great. Maybe the lyric on your song about, um, you know, uh, chiding or shaming the guy for not being able to get his dick up or something is, is not going to... It's not going to play well with the demographic that you're trying to, you know, push your uh, allegedly progressive and feminist message on. Maybe that's not going to go over so well. I, I think that maybe they could have used some help. I, th <laughs> I think maybe they could have used maybe just like an another eye, another point of view in the mix just to uh, uh, provide some creative recommendations and, you know, control. I mean, hey, you know, I, I'm not an island. I have people around me that give suggestions and points of view on things. Uh, shout out to McFarline in chat. My mod, my shooter, McFarline. So anyway, going through, uh, we made our own label called Make Tampons Free, which is so radical, which is like so, ugh, God, it's, it's so based in tampon pilled, TBH. Uh, which is distributed through AWOL, which uh, literally stands for Artists Without a Label. We own Make Tampons Free, no one else, so fuck off on all of that. Um, again, uh, I'm honestly going to believe them here, and again, I don't think a label is 100% behind everything that they're doing, because a lot of what they're doing is like really bad and painfully inauthentic, and I think if they did have like an A&R and like an art director behind what they were doing, uh, it would probably be looking better and just like coming off more authentic and less like cringe, uh, potentially. Uh, we wrote these songs 100% uh, between the band, Carol, Marissa, and Paige. As songwriters, we pull from the past and present. Our experiences between the three of us, Caro and Paige produced the songs and Paige mixed them, which uh, as I said in my Video covering this whole thing, uh, Paige is actually a very talented producer, and uh, I'm not surprised that uh, the production for Tramp Stamps has all been in-house. So fuck you if you are so fucking sexist that you can't believe this band was created and built from the ground up by three women. Industry plan. The irony is fucking astounding. Caro and Marissa are both signed to RX Songs. RX Songs is a publishing company, not a label. Publishing companies sign writers and producers and give them an advance so they can live and help set up sessions slash get songs placed uh, with other artists slash TV shows, etc. Page is signed as a writer and producer to Downtown Music Publishing and Pray For My Haters Publishing, which is not her own artist. Oh, let me think. Not her own artist development company, uh, LOL. That was funny, though. You know, this, um, as, as much as uh, I do find this whole Notes app thing very funny, this is part of what is, I guess, um, so confusing and wrong about most mass industry plant conversations because there's so little understanding to the outsider as to how exactly the music industry works and the very like the variety of jobs that one could hold in the music industry as is kind of illustrated here by being signed to a publishing company 
or a production company doing, you know, mixing and mastering and engineering, so on and so forth. Uh, being able to hold those jobs and have those jobs as a working musician or a musician who's trying to build a commercial career for themselves uh, does not make you an industry plant. Uh, just because you're, you know, somebody who produces for a publishing company or something like that or writes songs for a publishing company, uh, that doesn't mean that the minute that you start writing and recording music for yourself to start your own music career that all of a sudden the red carpet's going to be rolled out for you and so on and so forth. I mean, you may have easier access to people who work in the industry doing graphic design and other stuff, uh, you know, other roles because you're obviously in that area and, you know, your expertise is in that field. But again, doesn't mean that there's like some multi-million dollar promotion budget behind everything and anything that you're doing. And, um, you know, I, in the past when I see a lot of industry plant conversations, uh, they're usually very accusatory on the basis of like the weakest links to the entertainment industry in general, you know, case in point, uh, the whole Billie Eilish thing is people have kind of, you know, pointed out like, oh my God, oh my God, Billie Eilish, her, her parents, uh, it, it might have industry connection maybe. And, uh, you know, that was kind of debunked a little bit when, um, I did that uh, interview with Phineas and, uh, he was talking about when he was a kid and, uh, he was auditioning for not a kid, but you know, much younger and, uh, auditioning for a boy band and, uh, didn't make the cut, you know, and unfortunately his, uh, uh, his parents, big fat music industry connections that apparently they, they always have had to the point where they could just blow up Billie Eilish out of nowhere and make her the most famous uh, artist on the planet. Uh, they, they didn't come through for Phineas uh, in, in the boy band tryouts. You know, better luck next time, buddy. Um, <laughs> so having said that, uh, it's flattering that you think our graphics are so good that we couldn't possibly do it without a major label. Shout out to our 21-year-old freelance graphic designer that Marissa met in college. We fucking love her and agree that she's extremely talented. She's been credited on our post from the beginning. Rolling Stone, Newsweek, The Verge, Daily Dot. Shame on all of you. Shame. Shame on all of you. Uh, let's start with you, Rolling Stone. Cute, queer, clickbait headline. We'd assume a reputable news outlet such as yourself would wait to get a comment from the band before releasing such a mangled trash, infactual article. You know, honestly, me, I'm on a lot of deadlines and I do not have a whole journalistic apparatus around me at all times. Um, I do not, you know, work in a larger, greater institution and I do not have access to the resources that I assume somebody working for a publication as big as Rolling Stone does. I, I would hope that a place like Rolling Stone would get, would reach out for a quote or something, like get in contact with somebody. Like you guys are literally, you know, so deeply connected to the music industry. Like there has to be a point at which, you know, somebody at Rolling Stone could get a phone number from someone at downtown in five minutes. You know, I can't do that. I don't know anybody at downtown. I don't know anybody at this publishing company or that publishing company or the whatever shit. I don't know any of that shit. <laughs> so I am kind of, uh, you know, if, if what they're saying here is the case, I am a little, uh, you know, disappointed that uh, no reach out, no nothing. Um, though, you know, some of the publications I saw talking about uh, Tramp Stamp, it was uh, more just talking about the drama on TikTok and sort of like, a, uh, you know, just kind of what the basis of that was rather than kind of trying to discuss the facts of the matter, um, as it were, which I, I think is, you know, kind of a, way of getting around having to do a deeper dive and get something out quick. Um, because, uh, you know, essentially, as long as you're talking about, um, uh, you know, the controversy and not so much the subject, uh, it's easier to just kind of, you know, get something out about that while also take advantage of uh, SEO. And, uh, you know, the fact that this thing is trending probably only for a week. Uh, it may take longer to, you know, get an entire piece written up with interviews and so on and so forth to kind of, you know, really kind of pull this apart. But queer punk band, this band is not a queer band. We're a band that has a queer member, uh, lesbian in quotes, uh, question mark, in a TikTok. Marissa responded saying that she was gay. It's fucked up that she is uh, being forced to clarify this, but she will quite literally sleep with anyone. Um... Uh, I mean, I understand what they're saying, but, <laughs> but I think that's an odd way to put it. That includes any and all pronouns and identifications. Okay. You know, presuming that's what that meant. Yes. But it was, uh, 
I'd, uh, that's kind of a, an odd way to phrase it, but uh, it is a notes app apology, and this has way less, uh, I guess, uh, typos in it and grammar errors than most notes app apologies do. So uh, amen to that. Uh, queer identity and punk aesthetic for their own career gains. Fuck you, Rolling Stone. Um, you know, there are some things that I think uh, uh, tramp stamps are obviously doing uh, to appeal to people, I, I guess, in a very desperate pandering type of way. I don't know if I would go as far as to say uh, the sexual identity thing is part of it. Um, you know, I, I think uh, it's uh, honestly, I, I think it's uh, less the, the queer stuff and more the um, forced cringe, you know, tongue in cheek misandry that they're, you know, trying to uh, put on is like, <laughs> sex with guys is bad. Ugh, sex with guys is terrible. Um, it, it just kind of, as I said in my video, just reads like a very much like worse version of like what Ash Nico does on a lot of tracks. But um, moving on. Uh, now let's talk about the tweets. Uh, yeah, let's talk about those tweets. And it's it's really odd that this is brought up with a really indignant voice. Um, Marissa tweeted out language when she was 15 that she is deeply ashamed of. This language is not true to the person she is today, nor does she or the band condone that kind of language. In eight years, people grow up and change. Okay. It is, I just feel like that's a weird thing to pocket right after like chastising Rolling Stone. It almost kind of makes it feel like it's in kind of the, the same indignant voice and you're not kind of like um, really kind of handling the gravity of that, in my opinion. But again, this is a messy notes app apology. <clears throat> Shall we move on to ageism? Our oldest member is 29 years old. Some of you think she has a kid too. You've all pointed out uh, the obvious fact that she's married. She doesn't have a baby. Uh, but the idea that a female being 29 and having a family could negate her ability to be a relevant creator is absolutely embarrassing. No, no, no. Okay, well, wait. Time out. Time. Time. Time-o. Time-o, time-o. Um, people pointed out sort of the age thing, one, uh, not because people don't believe that women can create music and art uh, into their 30s or 40s or 50s. I don't think there's anybody on TikTok that believes that, honestly. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people on TikTok in the very music community that tour Tramp Stamps apart that are looking very much forward to the new St. Vincent record. So to me, this is kind of like a straw man, like genuinely. And I saw a lot of criticism of Tramp Stamps. I did not hear anybody on TikTok uh, where all of this drama had started and, you know, sort of like bubbled up uh, saying like, they're too old to be punk. They can't make music. They're too old. Um, that was very much not the sentiment uh, about anything that people were taking issue with in regards to your band, your music, your social media. Um, maybe there was, you know, a bit of an awkwardness being pointed out in the fact that uh, you guys are older and obviously like dressing like, uh, you know, the much younger demographic on TikTok and uh, doing it in a way that seemed almost like a costume was being put on or something. There's that, but that that's not sort of a direct issue with a, with the ageism. That's not really a, di a direct issue with age. And the only reason that people went on to point out that um, what one member is married to a white guy is because you have a song about how you'd rather die than sleep with a white guy. So it was just kind of, you know, just just a bit of hypocrisy, I think, that some people were pointing out because it was just, it was just kind of funny when you're talking about the not sleeping with a white guy band, um, having a member that is with a white guy. So that was just a bit of irony. Uh, Anthony, you're white. I, yeah, I'm 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 as I'm white. I'm white, white. I'm not even white. I'm white, white. So I think people are really just kind of pointing out the um, absurdity of that. I don't think anybody is really of the opinion that if you're a woman and you're 30, you can't make music. Or if you're a woman and you're married, you can't make music. I don't think that's anybody's argument or point of view. Again, straw man, you're kind of just arguing against a point that ultimately nobody is making. 
because, again, as this kind of continues, uh, guys are 900 years old and have families and nobody gives a shit about them or stops them from being artists. Yeah, that's because that that was that was never anyone's complaint. That was never anybody's issue. You know, no, nobody ever said tramp stamps. They can't have families and stuff and uh, be in their late 20s and make music. No way. That's crazy. Get, get the heck out of here. Tramp stamps. Uh, that, that, that was that was nobody's uh, argument. Uh, here's the final paragraph. We've been quiet for a few days, but not anymore. You've gone to the ends of the fucking earth to shit on us, have told us to kill ourselves, and have used conspiracy theories on TikTok as a trend to get more views on your own videos. Fuck you. You don't like our music? Don't fucking listen to it. We're not going anywhere. Comments are back on. Have fun. And don't forget to water your plants. Smiley face fuckers. Ha! <laughs> Now, um, I don't know, guys. I, I'm kind of curious as to, like, where exactly does Tramp Stamps go from here? I said in my video that I think um, Tramp Stamps does have maybe, like, a legitimate career past this point because I, I do think there is some songwriting and production talent there. Uh, maybe the vocals could be improved in time. Uh, but I, I think, honestly, if if there's going to be a Tramp Stamp song or record in the future that people actually anticipate and are excited for and does well, I, I think it's got to be delivered just more authentically. It can't, you know, be a product of this weird punk phase that you're suddenly going through and identifying with because you, like, started a band uh, last year. Like, your your punk phase can't be the start of your band last year. You know, and, and that's the thing. That's what people are kind of skeptical of here. And that's what people see as kind of silly because it's obvious that this band was the beginning of like your punk phase uh, or at least kind of this current iteration of it anyway. So uh, again, I don't really know where things kind of go from here with tramp stamps. Uh, is there any kind of like knowledge or experience gained from this whole thing or do they just continue on uh, completely uninterrupted as they have been and just keep dropping tracks and singles because while I think the majority of the drama has subsided at this point I, I can't imagine that they'll continue posting to uh, TikTok you know the various like memes and jokey videos and trendy videos they've been doing because the comments are going to be nothing but like fuck you you suck fake punk get out of here industry plants industry plants like it's going to be nothing but that probably for months um and you know while again i do think that there is a uh, some talent in there to what they're doing um as inauthentic as uh it is uh, on the promotion end of things. Uh, this is most likely going to be something that kind of haunts the three of them and this band for a while, uh, which, again, I, th I think is kind of, you know, the unfortunate side of uh, the Internet and cancel culture. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's kind of difficult to live this stuff down, especially when, you know, your uh, response to all of it is so combative. You know, I, I feel like... Um, you know, the, the audience that you were trying to appeal to this whole time is the exact audience that you're basically telling off right now, is the audience that you're telling off and having a fight with. So who exactly you're hoping to appeal to past this point, I don't know. I mean, I have seen some people responding here and there with like a spare tweet or like a quote tweet like hey screw all the haters I love you guys you're great but that can't possibly be enough people to sustain a music career it seems like there's way more people <laughs> who are just hating what you do and um you know while that can certainly uh uh, rise an artist and, and rise uh, an individual to prominence. I mean, look at freaking Takashi 69 Look at any number of artists out there that are really just like kind of trolls and uh, uh, rile people up on purpose. Um, I don't know if that's really Tramp Stamps' intention or what they, you know, really want to do from here on out. Will Tramp Stamps be going down like the Tom McDonald road and all they do from here is like, every single piece of media and song they release is intended simply just to like whack the wasp nest again and sort of like stir up all this hatred against them one more time uh, just to generate internet traffic and generate interest in what they're doing. I don't know. 
I don't know, looking at chat right now as far as like points of view or ideas as to uh, where things can really move from here. Uh, who's better, trapped or tramp stamps? I think um, <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, I'd, I'd probably rather as as you know as toxic as this whole thing has been. I think I'd rather listen to tramp stamps than trapped. I mean, at least I know in the case of tramp stamps that uh, there are no members of the group that are um, defending uh, uh, statutory because uh, that's literally what the lead singer of Trapped has done. Um, Recently, he's been quoted in an article saying, you know, when he got the account banned because he was, you know, defending statutory uh, on Twitter, literally, he was saying, I just made a joke. I made a joke, which which is true in a sense. Uh, he did make a joke about statutory on Twitter. But then as people started pulling apart the joke and saying it was in bad taste, he then started defending the substance of the tweet. So <laughs> it wasn't so much a joke as much as like humor meant to just expose your real feelings on something. So, you know, just using humors, using humor to try to soften the blow of your actually awful belief and uh, point of view. So, yeah, what a stand-up guy. What a stand-up guy, the lead singer of Trapped. <laughs> Biggest douchebag on the planet. Um, I mean, without all this BS, Tramp Stamps music is so bad. It is true, you know, and, and that's the other thing. I feel like if Tramp Stamps is really going to make it from here, the music's got to get better. The music really does have to get better. Mask off. It's the symbolic mask of comedy. That's true. That's true. Uh, Tramp Stamps is headstrong and ready to take on anyone. That is true. That is true. Hey, and I don't know if you guys uh, uh, saw this. I am I played bass on a, a cover of uh, uh, I'd Rather Die. It's a power violence version. Um, it's uh, up on a band camp right now. Uh, I'll, I'll go over there in a second. Um, I'll tell you guys where you can find it. But uh, proceeds go to Planned Parenthood. So... Back off on the Trapped guy who will take on anyone. Actually, I have confronted Trapped on Twitter, and I got blocked pretty quickly. Uh, he actually did not take me on. I, I was right there. I was ready to be taken on. I could have been taken on, but um, I did not get taken on. I just got blocked. That's, uh, that's all that happened to me. Nobody took me on, and I was right there. I was ready to be taken on. It just didn't happen. So, based and Trapped-pilled. That's all I have to say. Uh, Tramp Stamps future is to continue trolling. I, you know, honestly, if, if they're going to get anybody interested in their music again, I feel like it's got to happen one of two ways. It's got to be just now and forever trolling, trolling every single time they put out a new song, a new video, a new anything, just trolling, trolling, trolling. Every single post is hi fuckers. Uh, the next song and music video is called Industry Plants. And there's like a music video where they're all dancing around plants and shit. Uh, I've... <laughs> I think if they're going to continue, it's either got to be that or a serious musical and aesthetic uh, reset where they actually start presenting themselves in a more authentic way and the music is actually better. Uh, it's got to be one of two things, because honestly, I, I feel like if they really came clean and just like um, presented themselves in a more kind of honest and authentic way and they started making you know, legitimately better music, I, I don't think it would be impossible to win a lot of the TikTok kids that they were intending to appeal to back over. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching this clip on TND Streams. To see more, subscribe to the channel and also click on the video link next to my head. Also, make sure to check out our other YouTube channels linked down below to see everything else we do week to week. And yeah. That's it. Anthony Fantano, forever.